Welcome to today's video where I'm going to be picking out neutral or everyday wearable multichromes from the different formulas within the stained glass collection from Cleona Cosmetics. I've been wanting to do this video for a while and today, July 20th at 3 p.m. Eastern time, they're going to be restocking all of their stained glass collection as well as launching two new formulas, which I already have dedicated videos on. And I thought this would be a really useful video to get up for you. The stained glass collection is very overwhelming. There's so, so much to choose from. And I also understand that everybody wants to buy really colorful multi-chroma shadows that they might not gravitate towards. Now, some of these shadows have been sent to me and some of these were purchased, I would say, about half and half. The very first original launch of the stained glass collection, I purchased myself. And then after that, I did start receiving PR. And I do have a affiliated code with Cleona. I will put up on the screen in case you're interested. And the sale, oh my gosh, almost forgot to mention, everything's going to be 13% off. I think there's some exclusions, but not in the stained glass collection. And my code will stack and save you an extra six percent now Cleona is kind of known to have very expensive multi-chromes and I really feel like that's just a common misconception in terms of people just thinking of the black based jeweled multi-chromes which is really one of their like seven different formulas and those are $19 each so those are definitely not the most expensive multi-chromes out there there's other brands that have way more expensive multi-chromes than $19 but Cleona does have formulas within the stained glass collection that go below $8 so they're multi chromes range from $8 to the $19. So let's just get right into it. I'm going to be starting out with the iridescent multi-chromes. So first up, I chose these three shades. I actually don't have all of these from this formula. I believe these are the very, very first iridescent multi-chromes they launched. And these are just not really my preference uh, formula and finish wise. These are a little bit on the drier side and they're a bit more satin-like and that is just not really my preference. So the first shadow I picked up is Flicker. And you can see it really just blends into the skin and it looks very smooth, no glitter particles, but it doesn't have too, too much shine. And this one is like a orangey red straight on. And also the shift on these is not the strongest. Next shade is Ambient. It's a very cool tone purple and it shifts to a green. I see green from my angle and I see orange from my angle. So, so this is like a pink to orange. So there's the shift on that one. It's really beautiful. I think this one has a little bit more of a base than this one. You can also see that just in the pans themselves. And then the third shade is Luminaire. Again, I think there's like two more shadows in this collection. And I feel like they're all pretty mild. This one is a very frosty pinky purple that shifts to a yellow. So these are the Series 2 Iridescent Multichrome. So the previous ones were Series 1. These are kicked up a notch from the Series 1. They have a very smooth, beautiful texture. Definitely shine, but not necessarily sparkle. So the first shade is Halo. Just so beautiful. And you could layer this on just a little bit more. You could use this with a tacky primer, or you could really just get this to sheer out. It's totally up to your preference. And I mean, this is such a beautiful color. It might seem a little intimidating, but if you pair this with some brown neutral matte, I think it will really look beautiful and kick it up a notch with that shift, of course. Next up is Spectrum. This one shifts to a green. Again, super smooth, really beautiful. And this one, I think with some mauve tones, maybe even some cool toned browns would be really, really beautiful and interesting. Just a very dimensional shade. And I think all these areas and multi-chromes are one and done kind of eyeshadows. And then the last one is chromatic. And I see a lot of yellow. I definitely see a little bit of a base too. I did put on quite a bit so you can kind of see it has like a grayish base to it. So this one is more reddish and this one's more orangey and it shifts to a yellow. And these are all just beautifully smooth, except for the glitter iridescent multi-chromes. Now this does not mean there's any glitter. There's zero glitter in this. These are just very sparkly, like glitter. So that's why they're called glitter multi-chromes because of the formula being extra sparkly. These have a little bit more texture to them, though I do feel like the shade glint is maybe a little bit smoother, but gloaming is definitely a little bit more textured and there's some other shadows in this collection that are a little bit more textured. I have lots of Cleona content on my channel where I've swatched every eyeshadow, so I will link any relevant videos in the description box. First up is Glint. So this one just amped up a little bit. It is still pretty smooth, and I feel like this was actually a little bit similar to one of the other shades I just swatched. I believe it was Chromatic, maybe? So again, this one would be really beautiful with some mauve tones. 
really neutral browns of any sort, I think because it has this straight on goldish look, which is pretty neutral. But it's not just quite gold, you know, it's got that shift to it, so it just amps it up a notch. And then gloaming, you can see the texture. Here's a little closer peek at the texture. You can see it's got just a little bit more pieciness to it. That right below, this one also shifts to a, like this one is shifting more to a lime green versus this one's like a teal, like a really light aqua. And this one also, you could really pair with anything. I think it will just transform. Next up, since I have these nicely put together in this empty palette from Cleona, this is a smaller palette. These are the new dimensional multi-chromes. I have a dedicated video on them. I did some swatch comparisons. These are very flaky. They have lots of sparkly particles throughout them and they are extra shimmery, shiny. They have a gray base to them. The tones of these are a little bit on the darker side. So I think the most neutral out of all of these would be really kind of these three. So there are two shades from here and I wanna swatch them just on my fingers so that I can show you the texture. So you can kind of start to see they're again a little bit more piecey there. I would say they're most similar to the glitter formula from Cleona. However, they're maybe a little bit more flaky. And they do smooth out quite a bit, but I think that these are going to be messy if you use a brush for sure. Recommend some sort of a glitter primer. So here's Solder and here's Ferric. Ferric is such a perfect neutral multi-chrome with so much sparkle. It really is, I think, the perfect kind of neutral shadow that will bring you from a daytime look to a night look. Just keep in mind you want to do your base first before you do your eye look if you're using a little bit more textured shadows just to prevent any fallout. Next, moving on to the new jeweled lights, which are at the top. And then I'm also going to right afterwards talk about the original jeweled multichromes, which some of these are here and then the rest are in the larger palette. But first, I'm just going to talk about these. So really, these top three for me, I would say are the most kind of everyday friendly. They are so, so beautiful. They just have brightness to them and you don't have to worry about these blending to a black and looking like you have a smoky eye. The first one is Forge Light. And these are so silky smooth, very, very beautiful, smooth texture. So you can see that you can kind of see through them a little bit. So let me add another layer. You could definitely kind of keep these a little bit sheer if you wanted to or build them up or put them over your black base. I think these are just so versatile. Then Sand Blast. I love, love this one. It's such a beautiful copper shadow. And I think the shift really goes so well with the tone. So it's not anything like this, like this, when you wear it on the lid, obviously it's going to be a little bit more in your face because you're going from pink to green. And then the third one I would recommend is Burnish Light. This one shifts to a green, but it is so beautiful. It's definitely lighter than Sandblast Light and the tone is a bit different and it is just so, so magical. I, I love this new formula a lot. And from the original Jeweled Multichromes, I would still say Burnish. But this one is not very shifty. I honestly, when I first got it, I felt like it really, it really wasn't a multi-chrome quite like some of the rest of these original jeweled multi-chromes. Like the shift is very subtle, but it makes a really great everyday kind of shadow. And I do have comparisons in my recent video between the original and the new light formula if you're interested in seeing those. But see how the shift is just not as evident as in the new light formula. But it has, again, a beautiful bronzy, very smooth, metallic finish. The next shade from the Jewel Multichromes I would recommend is Weld. I have talked about the shadow nonstop since I got it. It is such a beautiful tone and it goes to a green. It is, it does have that black base. So just a little bit maybe on the smokier side, but I mean, look at that. It is so beautiful. This with some warm toned browns. And then the other two shadows, these are also similar to the original Burnish, not really that shifty. But that being said, I think they are still really beautiful and dimensional. So we've got Weathered. And these are a little bit more green leaning. So if you don't necessarily love greens, you might not love this. But it's kind of like a goldy green, which is why I think it's really nice. So the shift is pretty subtle in this one. Or Vermeil. I never knew actually how to pronounce this one. This one is really beautiful. This one has shift to a green. But I love the tone of it. It's almost like slightly more subdued version of Weld. Obviously the tone's also a little bit different, but it is so beautiful. So now we're in this larger palette. So these are the Vibrant 
glitter multichromes. These are the electric multichromes, which is currently my favorite formula from them. And then the all the glitter multichromes, including the expansion. I have a whole dedicated video on the expansion shades. I think there was like 54 shadows or something like that. And I did comparisons. Highly recommend checking that one out. So let's get into the vibrant glitter multichromes. I have two shadows that I'm going to pick out from here. And that's Court Jester and Empress. Here's a little texture check so you can see they got a little bit more texture to them but they do smooth out really beautifully and then court jester they do just pick up a little bit flaky from the pan and this one has so many flecks throughout it's so beautiful very magical i feel like this one is so unique this one is like on the borderline of being like a very interesting kind of neutral it has just so much dimension to it but this one you could pair with some pinky tones and i also feel like these two would be great to one and done shadows just kind of blend out the edges a little bit and you've got yourself a really stunning, super shiny, a little bit more subtly shifty for Core Jester kind of easy look. From the Electric Multichromes, I have these three shadows. I think you could easily tell why these are getting picked out. Obviously, I'm going to be mostly staying away from anything really green, really blue, really purple. I know those might feel like everyday wearable shadows for some people, but it's not for everyone and that's okay. So I'm going to be sticking to peaches, pinks, golds, yellows, anything basically that will look really beautiful on the lid on its own or with a neutral brownish, some sort of brown tone matte in the crease and maybe the outer corner. The electric multichromes have quite a bit of a translucent base. They can be built up a little bit. You could also put them over a tacky primer and these are so smooth and so, so beautiful. Here's a texture check in these. You can see this one, if anything, is a little bit, I believe this one's Oriel. It's got maybe just the tiniest bit more powderiness to it, but they are so beautiful. Oriel, Cinder, and Signet. This one's very, very sheer. From my angle, I see a lot more sheerness to this one. This one's a little bit more opaque. Love, love the vibrancy of this one. Like, it's got a little bit more depth to it, but it's very vibrant, and it almost looks like it's glowing a little bit. So here you can really see the shifts. And again, super smooth, so beautiful. My wrist will not stop cracking, so I apologize ahead of time. But I'm just trying to do, you know, the little wrist tricks to really show off the multichromes. And I think, again, these you could pair with whatever you could use these on their own and they will look just absolutely beautiful. I have a lot picked out from the glitter multichromes. I just feel like there's so many of these that these are so versatile. And of course they are a little bit sparkly. They got a little bit more texture to them, but they do smooth out. But I would recommend some sort of a tacky primer that sits down, especially if you have hooded oily lids such as myself. So let me just jump into these. I feel like I kind of want to order them a little bit to some similar kind of vibe. So let me do that first. I'm gonna start off with these pinks right here. So first up is translucent. So they've got just a little bit of texture to them. This one might be a little bit, you know, on the slightly less everyday wearable neutral side. Obviously anything can be wearable, but it does differ for everyone. And this one, again, beautiful one and done shadow. I feel like I'm going to sound like a broken record. This would be a really bad time to be playing a drinking game because these are just so versatile and you can just have fun layering them and then emboss, and I do believe the glitter multichromes really are around eight, nine, maybe $10 for the most part. Now emboss, oh, look at that, so beautiful. It is so shiny, I didn't need to layer on a second coat. I am dry swatching this, by the way, I forgot to mention that. I always dry swatch everything. Kaleidoscope, I mean, this would be great for a little Barbie eyeshadow look. I do feel like this one is not as shifty. I mean, you can kind of see it, but I feel like it's it's even more subtle because it's not as shiny on the lid. And then there's Sunbeam. Now, Sunbeam and Kaleidoscope, personally, I haven't been the biggest fan of. I feel like they're just not really up to par with some of the rest of these in the glitter formula and just for my preference, but they are really nice and smooth and they are still really beautiful, but I do feel like they're just a little bit less shiny. So I think this one is great because it's almost giving a little bit of like an iridescent kind of multi-chrome vibe there. So here's Trinket. So beautiful, so peachy, a little bit more summery. It's got a very strong orangey base to it with a little bit of like pinky purple over here flashing and then oh look at that oh yeah so so shiny beautiful flare it's a little bit similar i think this one has 
more of a reddish base versus an orange base but very similar and obviously this one completely flashes like lime green so this one's a little bit more of a spicy neutral which credit goes to Seeking Shifts aka Riley. She's coined that term so I gotta give credit where credit is due because it is absolutely brilliant because I let me some spicy neutrals. Then we have Torch. Oh so beautiful. This is definitely the name of this one is perfect. This one has a very strong orange yellow shift going to it and the the base is kind of orange too to it and then it's got like a magenta flash here and then engrave this one's pretty sheer especially in comparison to the rest of these this was just a really great layerable shadow but i do feel like it's maybe a little less shiny than the rest of them and i'm still on the glitter multi-chromes i'm not really sure what to call this batch but we're just gonna get right into it so there's chandelier can kind of see you can kind of get a vibe it's it's actually pretty wild because i see totally something else from my angle looking down i see like a very purpley taupey base to it but then bam it is green i mean that's such a unique shift i think in my humble opinion and then carving this one is like a slightly this one's like a darker version of that essentially yeah it's got a bit more of a base but kind of similar effect and a almost like a magenta brownish does that make any sense base to it and then there's opulent oh opulent how much i love the shadow this and weld are really just the shadows i will always mention first when i think of cleona and and when people ask me what i would recommend opulent really with some taupey mattes oh so so good and then there's adornment this one is so shiny and beautiful definitely on the much sheerer side and that just means that it you can put it over any mat and you will get a different result and that is just the beauty overall of this formula some of them you can see have a little bit more of a base than others and so that's totally up to you and i think these are the true neutrals from the glitter multi chromes so we've got blaze perfect name for the shadow very sheer got a pink flash to it and it goes to gold or yellowy orange love that one definitely like an og really great just like slap it on in the morning and you're good to go corrosion you'll still be turning heads i mean with really any multi-chrome like it's you're probably gonna be like celebrity status with these multi-chromes on the lid and this one has a brownish base and a gold goldish green kind of flash straight on embellishment i see a bit of like a peachy orange with a yellow base to it and then it has kind of similar flash as the shade above it and then foiling foiling is such an og this one is perfect perfect for neutral browns warm browns truly anything of that sort you could also for sure because it has a base to it use this all over the lid i just feel like it helps kind of give it a little bit more depth without actually having to use a matte shadow and then the last one is ornamental this one's a little bit more on the green side and it shifts a bit taupey there onto the rest of the formulas so we have the deep iridescent multichromes hybrid multichromes the pearlescent multichromes pastel multichromes earth vibrant multichromes and the vibrant multichromes so i think obviously from this bunch i mean they're called vibrant multichromes so i'm not really sure per se if there is a like everyday neutral multichrome if anything if i was to pick like two maybe i would say the yellow and orange over here so the shade coronation and the shade throne so let me swatch throne these are nice and smooth and then coronation next to that so these are a little bit more on the spicier side but again especially with the yellow depends on what you pair it with so let me talk about the pearl less than multichromes these were part of the extension of the stained glass collection these were purposely made and launched as the kind of everyday multichrome so of course we got to feature all four of these so there is palace and i do have a dedicated video on these i actually did some eye looks to show you how you could use these for very easy kind of looks and these are all very very smooth pretty shiny not like the shiniest but they're very smooth and beautiful and then scepter almost a spectra so it's a bit more orangey rogue it's a little bit more like a pink taupey pink and then renaissance these are just really great like you can't go wrong with any of these you can use these on their own you can pair these you can mix them together maybe create some other versions of spicy neutrals with these but i think this one is the shiftiest 
something to keep in mind. If you don't really want anything that's maybe too shifty or maybe you don't like a shift to green. Next, I'm going to talk about the pastel multichromes. I feel like these are pretty underrated, honestly. Like, they're actually very surprisingly beautiful. Next up, I'm going to talk about... Oops. Next up, I'm going to talk about these two pastel multichromes. I feel like these are pretty underrated. They're not anything too, too extremely shiny. They are a little bit more on the satin side, but I think that's what makes them just so easily wearable. So this is Cathedral, and I think you can tell the shine is a little bit dulled down. And it's just like a really beautiful shift to like an olive -y yellow gold. So it's a little bit more subtle. But again, it gives you that dimensionality. Of course, a one and done shadow. And then we have turret. Love this one too. They're a little bit similar. Do you need both? Probably not. This one's a little bit more purpley and this one's a little bit more like super taupey. Maybe like a, actually a dusty rose vibe. These are the hybrid multichrome. So they have a little bit of a grayish base to them. And some of these have a little bit more texture to them than others, specifically the shade Chalice. Let me just swatch this one. These are all pretty smooth. So here is Chalice. I'm gonna make sure I save room for the rest of them. Below that is Rose Line. This one is a little bit darker. It's not that it has like almost a gr darker grayish base. It actually has a kind of a reddish brown base to it, which just makes it seem more opaque. We've got Eris, and this one has very beautiful light orangey yellow base to it. It's a bit more sheer. Mosaic's also darker. And then Queen's Banquet. This one's leaning towards purple. Second to last formula are the Deep Iridescent Multichromes. And this is probably, I think, my second favorite formula. I feel like there's about three formulas that are kind of my favorite. And that's the Earth Vibrant, the Deep Iridescent, as well as the Electric. And the reason I love the Deep Iridescent is some of these are so vibrant. And they're all really, really smooth. This is Vermilion. I absolutely love this one. One of my absolute favorite shades. For sure, a go-to. Love, love, love this one. And it's quite shifty and very metallic. You could share this one out a little bit. Doesn't have too much of a base. Next up is Saffron. So, so beautiful. Oh, I think the name is just so perfect for this one. It's kind of like a reddish pink, but like a different tone from the one above it. Burnt Sienna. Perfection. Once again, love this one. More orangey. You're just really covering all your bases here with just really what your preference is, what you see yourself wearing the most. Auric, which actually means gold. I forget in what language, but the reason I know it is because of Samantha Ravendahl's brand. And I love this one. This one's maybe a little bit peachier. Do I dare say that? Yeah, it's got a little bit of a different something going on there. Next up is Ceres. Ceres. This one's a bit more purple leaning straight on. And then last but certainly not least are the Earth Vibrant Multichromes. And these are super smooth. First, I'm going to just watch Cobblestone. And this one just got a lot of taupiness going on. I love the vibe of this one with some super cool toned, maybe even grayish toned matte shadows. Royal Plum, a little bit more of a smokier kind of eye, but basically like a taken up a notch, added a little bit of a darker base. And this one, the shift is so magical, really, really shifty. I think it's because of the contrast of the two colors that are shifting. Iron Gate, perfect neutral, nice and smooth. Bronze Fountain. Ooh, this one's got a very strong reddish orangey base to it with a gold yellowy flash straight on. And the last one is Statue Garden. This one is just so interesting, even in the pan. It just looks very, very interesting. This one has like a teal base to it, which you can really see here. And then that flash of pinky purple. The camera doesn't want to focus because it's on my wrist but that one is just so magical. It's very, very unique. Maybe a little bit more on the spicy side. And that brings us to the end of the recommendations from the different 
formulas from the stained glass collection let me know which of these shades is your favorite do you plan on picking any of these up or just putting them on the wish list and if you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you are new to my channel there is so much multi content already on my channel and much more to come you don't want to miss out and now it's time for me to have some ice cream and edit this video so thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you next time